scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It's my desire that our hearts be opened to bless us. You know, we live in times now when <clears throat> several people are perplexed, several people are discouraged. The pandemic has come to complicate matters and many people are asking God where are you and just trying to get direction for the next level of their lives and so this I believe is coming very handy and uh, providing for us supernatural solutions I believe that when God allows conferences like this to happen it is because he seeks to step in and bless our hearts so wherever you are whether you're in the church or at home get your bibles get your notepads your ipads whatever it is that you will use and let's get to study the scripture let's pray father we bless you for the privilege to bring the word of god to new heritage baptist church even at such a time i thank you and i honor you for the opportunity that you have provided the bible declares that the entrance of your word be life and even on this very very instructive statement for with god nothing shall be impossible that means without God, outside of God, outside of his contribution, there are many things that may not be possible. And this, this is already a message for someone because respectfully speaking, we live in a generation and a context that um, for some reason, because of the advancement in technology, advancement in science, and, and which, which has been very profitable, sometimes we tend to just push God out or take God as an extra luggage you know but the bible clearly tells us here that for with god nothing shall be impossible that means if we want to activate possibilities in our lives uh, it is imperative that god becomes the principal factor in our lives praise the name of the lord very very important the bible tells us in daniel chapter 11 daniel chapter 11 let's go to verse 32 daniel 11 the B part is my part of emphasis, but I'll read everything he said. And such as do wickedly, is the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. I, I want to um, share with us the principles that govern results because we're talking about activating possibilities in our lives and i have taught it let me maybe just reiterate i've taught it again and again that really why we seek god we do not love him and serve him and seek him just because we want results finances maybe children prosperity advancement in career these things are very important but the principal reason why we serve god is because we love him it's an honor for us to serve him and it remains an honor. So it, it's important that as we explore this sensitive topic, I just make it plain that the pursuit of God has nothing to do with what he will give us. It is, it is our response to his love. We seek him because we passionately love him. And if we do not get this right, then every other thing will be wrong. It will be built on a wrong foundation. However, the Bible also lets us know that God is benevolent enough to pay attention to our needs. That whilst we serve him sincerely, he desires that our lives become reflections of his love. Because the very character of love, according to John 3.16, is that it gives. 
for God so loved the world that he gave so every time there is genuine love there is giving he will let fullness and then the Bible also tells us that we have been made to be partakers of his divine nature and if that is true then there should be experiences captured in our lives that attest to the fact that we truly are in experience partakers of his divine nature so whether they come as prosperity they come as healing they come as speed they come as restoration every act of god manifested in the life of the believer these things are tokens of his love they buttress on the fact that he loves us and so i i believe that god wants to prosper us by the grace of god i am very outspoken about the whole counsel of god i believe that the believers experience is fullest when we open up to all the dimensions that are captured in god it we shouldn't just embrace the love of god and then negate other dimensions in the dealings of god that can profit us praise the lord and so we're going to be examining some of the principles that really help us govern results because when we talk about possibilities and exploits in the kingdom we've established the fact that god himself is willing to give this to us in fact let's look at romans chapter 5 romans chapter 5 and verse 11 romans 5 and verse 11 17 i meant to say romans 5 please give us verse 17 it says for if by one man's offense paul is teaching the church in rome now death reigned by one he said much more they which receive the abundance of grace and of or which is the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ so the bible tells us very clearly here that because we have received the abundance of grace uh, which reflects as the gift of righteousness and by it he says we reign in life revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 tells us very clearly john was caught in the isle of patmos and when he heard the worship that was going on in heaven the bible says and has made us unto our god kings and priests and he says we shall reign on the earth so the earth is our jurisdiction of dominion and it is the will of god that we reign we walk in dominion we walk in power but these things happen by principles again i'll go back to a scripture that has become an anthem to my life um psalms 82 psalms 82 and we'll begin to read from verse 5. it says they know not so the psalmist is now talking telling us why in spite of the substitutionary sacrifice of christ in spite of all the provisions that have been made for the believer why are we not able to maximize our lives our destinies in christ to the fullest and he's attempting by the spirit to proffer solution and he starts by addressing the issue of ignorance he says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness he says and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said no priest to me seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children knowledge knowledge believers please hear me <clears throat> the bridge between the prophetic desire of god for our lives and their experiential manifestation is knowledge we need to understand that the love of god as powerful as it is does not automatic uh, automatically guarantee the the manifestation of his word this is this is something i must emphasize i think i should say it again that the love of god does not automatically guarantee that we will experience the fullness of of everything that he has in store for us we have a role to engage through knowledge the keys of the kingdom matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus is teaching now and he's introducing the disciples and all who were under his teaching to a very powerful kingdom concept and he said he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you joshua selman to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them he says it is not given that means that the mysteries of the kingdom represent the compendium the body of spiritual knowledge allocated for the victory of the saints 
the saints will not just rise in light automatically the saints will not just rise to become ambassadors in experience automatically now many believers are well-meaning we go to church we love god we pray we even study the bible respectfully speaking from a religious standpoint but many are unable to experience the fullness of god because we do not understand the systemic nature of the operation of the kingdom that it takes more than desire it takes more than a well-meaning heart in fact you hear people say i'm a nice person i've not offended anyone why is life treating me this way uh it does not just happen because of sincerity of heart we must be able to understand the ways of god take note of that the ways of god the methodologies of the kingdom and i call them mysteries that the mysteries of the kingdom represent the body of knowledge allocated for the saints these are the keys of the kingdom by which saints the saints command dominion it's important that we understand these are the principles that produce results in the life of the believer so you can have two believers who love god born again filled with the holy spirit but the possibilities that they command do not necessarily depend on the election of grace with a few exceptions it doesn't necessarily depend on location geography and all of these things the moment we have access to the word of god and then we engage it with understanding fishing out of it by the spirit the keys are located for our victory then when we are careful to engage these keys inevitably our lives will begin to change to reflect what the word of god said so we're going to examine i will just take maybe one of the keys for this session uh, they are the laws of the kingdom and i just want to share with us the keys that will help us to activate divine possibilities the first that we'll look at by the grace of god is called the law of faith the law of faith if you're writing please write that down the law of faith this is the first kingdom key kingdom mystery that uh is allocated for activating divine possibilities in the life of the believer faith is very important repeatedly through scripture the bible tells us that the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith the just one who has been justified but he will still need the faith of god to live by numbers 23 please and verse 19 numbers 23 and verse 19 very powerful scripture it says god is not a man now this is a very powerful scripture god became a man but god is not a man very very important god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent that means he is that accurate he does not need to correct what he has said have he said and shall he not do it powerful scripture or have he spoken and shall he not make good look at that scripture carefully he says god is not a man that he should lie that means you can trust him nor the son of man that he should repent he says have he said and shall he not do it or have he spoken and shall he not make it good this is very powerful that means god is dependable that means you can trust god you can take his word as currency and transact superior business in the realm of the spirit purchasing for yourself possibilities that are not affordable by the strength of the flesh so when you find individuals commanding dimensions of results that the currency they have used to purchase these possibilities is the speakings of god the bible calls it the logos the word of god john 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word the logos of god it says and the word was with god and the word was god verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with god verse 3 says all things all things new heritage baptist church all things finance all things children all things restoration all things the breakthrough that you need all things the career that you need it says all things were made manufactured 
so understand where all things come from the possibilities that we are trying to talk about in this conference are possibilities that already exist in the world they are only manifested in our lives they are not manifested in heaven these are realities that already exist our finances our jobs so what we call a miracle in the earth realm is simply a system of transfer from the realm of the spirit that that reality is already in existence very powerful so for the woman who is trusting god for the fruit of the womb the child is not going to jump and just manifest it's already a reality waiting to be transported for one who is trusting god for increase in finances trusting god for healing trusting god for breakthrough and favor these things all things were made by him we're dealing with the law of faith now we cannot talk about faith until we understand the operation of the word of god all things not some things all things were made by him so my tomorrow is already in the world it's not going to come by the chronos the passage of time i rest in the fact that my tomorrow is already made this is the day that the lord has made not will make has made is new to me but not new to him this is the day the lord has made so it says all things were made by him then it says without him remember our initial scripture that means outside of him was not anything made that was made listen believers that means if you ever see anything manifest that is good it came as a derivative of not just scripture the letter logos that was printed by zondervan or white taker house no this is not what we're talking about we mean the speakings of god that came from the lips of the logos of god himself all things all things all things if i were you i would begin to write a list of whatever represents all things so that i i need to convince myself all things my lifting all things my exploits in ministry all things my safety even in the midst of the pandemic all things all things made by him all things made not brought by him not delivered by him if all things were only delivered by him then he is not god whoever makes is god he says i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help then he says my help cometh from the lord the maker god is not only a healer god is not only a restorer he is a maker and when you you want to understand the concept of making you have to go to the kitchen when you tell someone make me bread or make me venison that means combine factors create something that was not there manifest in that way let us make man if god made man can he not make any other thing the zenith of his creation the heavens and the earth were made man was made the bread that he eats was made the, the devil that oppresses man was also made there was nothing that was not made when you understand the making power of the word doubt leaves you because for many of us the challenge most times is we know that the word of god can deliver results but we do not we we hope that the word of god can only transport results from where it has only already been made i'll give you an instance if you are looking for a job it's easy to believe that i can get a job because you heard there is a vacancy physical vacancy somewhere so your trust is not that god should create space your trust is that god should connect you but god is saying i'm not just a connector to possibilities i can make a way where there is no way that means it is not your business whether the reality exists in the earth realm or not if it does not exist i am everything i can make a door i can provide whatever it is my help cometh from the lord please let's go back to john 1 and verse 3 very instructive scripture all things we're dealing with the law of faith now that faith is predicated upon a revelation if faith is not just action faith is not just speaking you see the mistake we make in the body of christ is that we always like to act alone we always like to speak alone the foundation of faith is a revelation conviction that stems upon the fact that god is almighty 
and that God can be trusted. That's why I took that scripture in Numbers. God cleared the air over his integrity once and for all so that we are not in doubt. Because you see, many times Satan will lie to us. He will use our situations to paint God wrong. And the moment you are in doubt of God's fatherhood and faithfulness, you cannot trust him. You see, if I if I tell you to come and collect, say, a thousand dollars or a thousand naira from me, you will have to trust whether I have the integrity enough to do that for you. If you are in doubt of that integrity, you will also be in doubt of your fortitude for reception. So this is very important. All things were made by him. So if God tells me, Joshua Selman, you are blessed, you will be the head and not the tail. I don't need to find out where the head is. I don't need to find out how I will get there. My first assignment is to believe that the speaker of this truth has the power to make all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was. So everything is made. Results are made. Breakthroughs are made. Liftings are made. Possibilities are made. Hallelujah. So this is very important. If you are writing, I want you to write this down. Number one is you will have to take risks of faith to succeed in life it is a law we live in a world where we are very risk averse we do not want to fail we hate failure we hate being purported as failures and so we are we are very we are, we are excessively careful to a fault it is the reason why we cannot do many things. There are people today who cannot start businesses because they are afraid of failure. They were in a world of guarantees. We are obsessed with guarantees. The bank will not give you loan, for instance, until they have a system of guarantee. Most people will want, give me a guarantee that I will arrive safely from my trip. Give me a guarantee that the journey I'm about to start is not a risky one. The, 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 the risk that you will have to take in life is the risk of faith. The fearful, I wrote down here, and the cowardly never become great. Those who are fearful in life, those who are cowardly never become great. In fact, when you read Joshua chapter 1, it was uh, on the first seven verses of Joshua chapter 1 was the Lord exhorting Joshua. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Then he began to admonish Joshua. Joshua, I know that you have never treaded this path before. You have never led a stiff-necked and a stubborn people like this. I know that there are many things that you anticipate that will happen to you. But then he told him, be strong and of good courage. The fearful that come great it will take us trusting god even at times like this there are people who have lost jobs as a result of the pandemic there are people who have lost opportunities businesses are foiled up several things have to people and right now people are perplexed they are they are full of fear they are wondering uh, what next they are already prophecies that you know insinuate disasters of some sort coming in the future and people are afraid but he says only be thou strong and very courageous so the law of faith mandates that we'll be prepared to take risks to take risks in life john 11 and verse 40 shalapo sebranda gabasuzita jesus said to her saith i not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe believe agree with me take me serious take me as true thou shouldest see the glory of god the glory of god is the full weight of everything that makes him god the entire span of the essence of who he is his goodness his love his power that if you want to see the favor the goodness the power the the glory of God, you will have to believe. You have to take God seriously. You have to pledge your life and say, Lord, I believe you. I understand what you have said. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap 
the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you